Hello and welcome to another edition of What Does Mr. Raj Say Media with me, Kathleen Rattorne. We're an organisation that aims to connect people with conservation efforts around the world by holding live interviews on social media. Today, I'm very excited. I am joined by Holly Budge and she is the founder of How Many Elephants and also the co-founder of World Female Ranger Day. So Holly, you've got a really fascinating background. So I'd love for you to kind of start off talking a little bit about yourself, um, maybe touching on as well the fact that you are um, a bit of an adventurist as well, talking about some of your world records and then how that kind of led into your motivation to, to be involved in conservation. Absolutely. Thank you for having me today, Kathleen. It's lovely to be here chatting with you. Um, so for me, it all started uh, when I was 21. I um, threw myself out of a perfectly good aeroplane for the first time. And that 60 seconds of adrenaline and that 60 seconds of sheer terror completely changed the course of my life forever. Um, not only did I love the experience and want to go straight back up and do it again, I was also blown away that people were actually getting paid to jump out of perfectly good aeroplanes every day of the year. And funnily enough, my careers advisor at school and, and college hadn't mentioned that to me. So I decided there and then this is what I want to be doing. I want to be employed as a skydiving camera woman. Um, so I came back to the UK, carried on working in my role as a graphic designer in Lond London, saved up enough money, went back to New Zealand, put myself through my skydiving course. And several months later, um, I scored my dream job and was getting paid to jump out of planes up to 12 times a day, every day. Um, and on reflection, I like to call it the boldness of youth because it was a pretty big goal. I knew nobody in New Zealand. I knew nothing about skydiving and I knew nothing about filming, but none of that mattered because I knew I could learn those skills or I could at least have a go. So I've tried to, I refer to this as my 21 year old mindset. I'm now 42. So um, I try and keep this uh, very positive mindset going and have done over the last two decades. And that's taken me on some pretty incredible um, sponsored adventures around the world, including becoming the first woman to skydive Everest. That was just an opportunity I wasn't going to miss out on as a skydiver. Um, and also I've raced a thousand kilometers across Mongolia on horseback in just nine days. Um, and I've done lots of mountaineering and recently climbed, well, recently, four years ago, climbed to the summit of Mount Everest and took the flag of my charity, How Many Elephants, to raise awareness and funds. Um, but it's just keeping that that sort of uh, attitude, that, that can-do attitude. So when I first laid eyes on Mount Everest, um, I knew one day I would be back to climb to the summit, but I knew nothing about mountaineering. So um, eight years ago, I set about learning how to climb mountains, quickly found myself uh, back in the Himalayas and uh, just went from strength to strength, really. I'm, I'm fortunate. I, I seem to do quite well at high altitude, um, which, you know, some people do struggle with. Um, so, yeah, it's just keeping this this positive, uh, like I said, just giving it a go, see what happens, kind of an attitude. I mean, I absolutely love that. And I love the fact that you kind of um, feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> um, so so how then did that kind of lead into you wanting to start up How Many Elephants? Is this uh, is conservation something you're always passionate about or did this come later on? And kind of what was the inspiration for that? Yeah, I think uh, I've always been very passionate about wildlife. And as a child, I grew up, you know, very much in nature. I feel so fortunate to have had the childhood I had without technology, um, you know, compared to a lot of the youth of today who are, are plugged into screens uh, a lot of the time. Um, so I've, I've always had that connection with the outdoors. Um, and also I've I've always had really supportive uh, family. So when I came back at 21 and told my parents I was going to move halfway around the world and jump out of aeroplanes, they said, absolutely, go for it. Good on you. So I always like to put that in there because I think it's so important to uh, to not be too rigid in, in your you know mindset, thinking you have to rush into a serious job, you know, take a year out, go traveling, see what happens. 
and be open to those opportunities. Um, so in terms of how did I do a master's, um, as much as I love adventure, I found after a while of jumping out of aeroplanes and, and doing other adventures, I, I wanted to go back to my creative roots and, and my, my background as a designer. And so I was actually working with a material called vegetable ivory, which is a nut from a palm tree from South America. And it's an incredible material in its own right. Um, and I was studying that, but it was actually the material similarity to elephant ivory that got me researching the African elephant crisis. And that was the beginnings of, of founding my now um, registered charity, How Many Elephants? And I think we're going to come on to that a bit later. But back to your question of, uh, you know, more uh, adventure with purpose. It's not so much about world records and, and world firsts for me anymore. Um, now it's about spending time on the front line with with all female anti-poaching teams in Africa, which quite honestly blows any other adventure I've ever done completely out the water. It's it's pretty uh, exposing, you know, being out on patrol with these these women and they're totally your lifeline. You know, you're in the middle of nowhere. The Akashinga Rangers, when I patrolled with them, they all had AK-47s. I'm the only one that didn't. I'm the only white person in the bush, so I stood out a mile. They tried to get me to, well, they, I had to put their uniform on to try and blend in, but it didn't really work so well. Short sleeve shirt. Um, but, you know, lich, wild animals, signs of poachers, and, and it, you do sort of feel like, uh, yeah, without these women, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dead woman. Give me a mountain and I feel much more at home. Give me the African bush and it's a, it's a very different environment for me, but one that I love. <laughs> when when you decided that you wanted to do something to to protect the elephants and to stop the uh the trade in ivory and that kind of stuff yeah obviously we touched on it just now that your background is in design so then can we talk a little bit about how you decided to merge the two together and kind of how that helps people understand the data a bit more absolutely i mean it took me a very long time to really figure out how my passions for design, conservation and adventure would, would fit together. And it wasn't until I went and did my master's and came up with the campaign, How Many Elephants, um, that I realised that adventure and my adventuring uh, was a great platform to raise funds for the charity as one revenue stream into the charity. So to date, I've raised over £400,000. Um, um, but in terms of design, I, I was so horrified by the poaching statistics and what I was reading um, that 96 elephants are poached each day, 35,000 a year. Um, I wanted to use my background as a designer to come up with a fresh, unique awareness raising campaign. So what I do is I visualize the data. So I built this necklace, which has won five design awards so far. And it's 96 elephants cut in vegetable ivory to show the daily poaching rate. Um, I weaved a narrative into the piece. One, one elephant is hand cut in brass um, to represent the one day aspect of, of the, the necklace. And one elephant is facing the other way to say that this crisis can still be turned around and the elephants aren't extinct yet. So what I'm doing, Kathleen, is using design to bridge the gap between scientific data and human connection. And to accompany the necklace is my hard hitting exhibition, which uh, showcases 35,000 elephants on a wall. And I've purposely avoided using any gruesome or gory images. So the campaign is 100% non gory, non gruesome, it's non political, it's just visualizing the data. And when you see and connect with this data in a purely visual way, it's it's really impactful to see 35,000 elephants on a wall. But it doesn't matter whether it's the whole exhibition. Some spaces we've exhibited in have only had room to exhibit one month of poaching or six months. And it's still just as impactful to uh, to see these numbers in this way. And it really gives you a sense of the sheer scale of the uh, African elephant poaching crisis. And we're trying to get it into public spaces as much as possible. So into airports, train stations, et cetera. 
Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, sometimes when people are, are looking at the conservation, if, if it's not something they're particularly interested in, they don't kind of delve deeper into it. But whereas the, what, the work you're doing, it's so visual. So your general person who may not have really understood the fact that these elephants are going, are actually seeing it very visually and they may then be kind of woken up to want to do something. Have you found stories yeah. that this has happened? Uh, yeah, all the time. So because it's non-gory and non-gruesome, it's allowed me to connect with audiences that I may well have not been able to reach before. And a, a big part of that is working with uh, schools and, and young people. So I've literally had thousands of school children come to various exhibitions, do workshops with myself. And just seeing that penny drop with them, I mean, they're, they're horrified by, by what they're hearing. Um, but, you know, you sort of start to see their, their brains ticking. And I've, I've actually um, had some of the students that I met probably three or four years ago message me now and say, I was so inspired by your campaign and your exhibition, I've now gone on to study, you know, biology, conservation, da, da, da. So it's, it really, that, you know, that seed um you know really took them off in a different direction and um i think to me that's makes it very worthwhile you know that's huge i absolutely love that and i completely agree and um, you touched on it a little bit earlier and you were saying about the fact that by doing your adventures you managed to raise around four four hundred thousand pounds for for different charities and that kind of stuff yeah when people back home are watching and, and they kind of want to be able to help other charities and do that kind of stuff what sort of advice would you give to them do you mean doing adventures and raising money or how can they help my my charity in particular? Um, if we if we speak more about the adventure side, we'll go a bit into the help helping you yep. guys later. But yeah, if they if they're looking at you and being like, okay, I I want to be doing something similar, how how do I do yeah. it? Well, I think uh, first thing I would say, and, and me and Kathleen touched on this before this interview, is you know, you don't have to have you don't have to be in a specialist career or a field. In fact, I found being multi-skilled in many different areas so my adventures span skydiving horse riding mountaineering and then I've coupled that with my design skills and my my love of animals so I think it's being really open to as, as many different areas as you can be I mean I've worked with some fascinating people that have really uh, crossed over skills so they might be studying politics but be an incredible illustrator for example so I think it's just being really open to uh, not not you know just thinking I have to have this one skill set and I have to fit into one box so when people ask me what do you do it's, it's really difficult to answer that it's like how long have you got so I still don't have a very short answer to that question um, but in terms of actually getting people to believe in you and buy into your vision um, I would say passion passion shines through passion is contagious and people definitely buy into it you know if you're genuinely passionate about something I think that really comes through so for example when I heard about the skydive Everest expedition I um, rang the organizer and it quickly became apparent mm. that I would, was the only woman on the expedition. So I knew that was my hook for getting sponsors on board, that I wanted to become the first woman to skydive Everest. And he said, can I count you on board, Holly? And I said, yep, yeah, count me on board. And he said, um, that will be £24,000, please. And I was like, uh, yep, yeah, absolutely, count me in. You know, didn't have £24,000 sitting there. But it didn't matter because I knew I could just give it my all to go out and find sponsors and, and find people to buy in to my passion. And that's what I did. And then once you start getting a few bigger adventures under your belt, it gets a little bit easier. But I would never say, uh, you know, uh, getting sponsors on board is not, not an easy task. Um, but and you have to be quite creative, too. So when I climbed Everest, I got an IT company to sponsor me because they were trying to promote Wi-Fi in remote places. So I took this uh, modem with me to the summit. <laughs> I felt really bad for them because when I got to the summit, this was the first year, uh, the Chinese, because I climbed from the north side in Tibet, and the Chinese had spent so much in infrastructure, um, I was able to get 3G off the summit. <laughs> 
So it's like, sorry, guys, you know, your modem does work, but it turns out you can just turn on your, your <laughs> iPhone and get it anyway. So, um, but yeah, it gives you, I think you have to be very professional and, and treat it like very much a business arrangement. So everything I promised them that I would do, I delivered on. Um, and I look at it as an equal relationship um, when you are out on expeditions, you're uh, gathering content, uh, photos, writing blogs, doing all sorts uh, for them to share. So I think doing everything to a high level and, and really keeping to, to what you've promised. Um, but my easiest sponsor ever was a lobster farmer in North Wales who um, all he wanted in return was uh, to go down to his local and chat to his mates about my adventure. So, you, you know, sometimes the uh, the lobster farmers do uh, as sort of, the, you know, those, that kind of amazing sponsor does does appear, but but not very often. <laughs> I love that as well, the fact that, you know, um, you don't have to look at, you can look outside the box at who would be interested in hearing your stories and wanting to sponsor as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same people that are, are already aware of these organizations and, and the work that's being done, for example. Absolutely. And I think my motto is think big, dream bigger. So, you know, just give it a go. What really, what's the worst that's going to happen? They're going to say no. Um, so I think, you know, you do have to be quite resilient to be a, to be a, an adventurer. And it takes, um, you know, people just see the highlights of, of, you on the summit of Everest or skydiving out of a plane next to Everest. But it's kind of like the iceberg theory. And, and underneath of that is a huge amount of rejection and a huge amount of, of hard work. Um, so, yeah, I think it's uh, it's really important to uh, to know that you have to be very persistent and uh, resilient to uh, to choose being an adventurer as your line of work um, and actually making a living out of it so I, I make my living from speaking so I speak to corporates and at events um you know and if I didn't if I couldn't do that I wouldn't be able to do the adventuring um you know as well as getting the sponsors on board of course and then have you found as well that um you're you said you were the first woman um to to jump from Everest um have you seen a change in attitude towards what people expectations of what a woman can do and you know kind of breaking down those barriers definitely so when I arrived in New Zealand 20 years ago and got my dream job at the time as a um, camera flyer I was the fourth woman to have ever worked in that role or as a jumping member of staff as opposed to the receptionist or a parachute packer um, so it wasn't really a very uh, known thing then uh, women being employed in these roles but now when I go back there um, there's loads of women so it's it's fantastic when you you start to see uh, you know male dominated industries being broken down and, and becoming much more equal um, and again I'm sure um, with Skydive Everest because that happens every year now so um, I'm, I'm guessing um, there's women out there doing that as much as the men I couldn't say that for sure but I, I definitely imagine so and kind of feeding on from that I mean I know you're very much about um, female empowerment and breaking down that stigma um, it's one of the things that kind of was made me interested in having you on the show in the first place you recently launched uh, co-founded in fact um, World Female Ranger Day uh, which is a, a fantastic initiative and I, 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 I uh, recommend people back home watching to go check it out find them on Facebook, Instagram, and on the websites as well. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about why you decided to start World Female Ranger Day and the importance Definitely. of it? Yeah. yeah, so it was through, simply through my time uh, on the front line with uh, multiple all-female anti-poaching teams. So I've been out with the Black Mambas in South Africa and uh, the Akashinga Rangers in Zimbabwe. Um, I was so inspired by these these women. They're they're incredible, um, and I just wanted. Not only was I inspired by them, I also saw the challenges that they were facing, and I wanted to come up with a way of uh, raising awareness of the work that they're doing, celebrating them, championing them, raising funds for them. So that's where the idea for World Female Ranger Day came about to build a platform uh, that allows these women to come together to share their stories, share best practice 
and access and receive peer support. So this year we focused a spotlight on Africa. But to be honest, Kathleen, we've been chatting uh, with rangers, all, female rangers all over the world, and it has just been fascinating. We've chatting with um, the ranger teams in Venezuela, in China, Sri Lanka, India, in Scotland, in Tasmania. And even though these women are on opposite sides of the planet, they're facing very, very similar challenges. Um, so, yeah, this is really just about um, providing that platform and bringing them together. So the, the global media really ran with this story. This was the first year that we we ran, we launched World Female Ranger Day on June the 23rd. And we were live on Sky News, um, on um, Woman's Hour, on Times Radio, Nat Geo Kids, you know, all these big platforms. And I um, brought together rangers from different African countries um, live on these platforms. And we did a Zoom call beforehand and it was just magical to see the, the rangers chatting to one another. And as I said, this just hasn't been done before. And, and some of these rangers said that they just didn't even think about that there was other women in other countries doing similar work to what they're doing. So I'm hoping this is just gonna build and build and build. So we're really trying to connect these rangers. And um, as I said, for them to share their stories and as a way of raising funds for them. And through our primary research, we found over three and a half thousand female rangers over 18 African countries. And we believe there's many more because people are coming forward, wanting to get involved with the campaign. So um, it's fascinating. Like I could spend a lifetime just advocating, and I, I have done for the last eight years, advocated the work of these women. And um, through spending time with them, I've and I'm talking a few weeks with the Black Mambas. So film crews generally get sort of maybe two or three hour slots a day. It's quite limited. I was like um, patrolling, eating, sleeping with them in their outposts, you know, just fully immersed with, with these women, trying to find out what drives and motivates them to do the work that they do, because they're not only working on the front line of conservation, often doing dangerous work or in dangerous environments. They're also um, educators, they're role models, and they're beacons of hope. And there's, it's like an onion. You just keep peeling back the layers and it's brilliant. I, um, I'm, I'm very passionate about it. And I think World Female Ranger Day is just going to keep uh, growing because the female ranger movement is, is gaining momentum at such a rapid pace because these women are proving to be so good in these roles. And, and we've said, people have said to us, uh, the question I get asked the most is, um, you know, why women? And, um, you know, one person the other day um, said that I was creating a, a Western gender war. Um, and it's like, you know, there's nothing, we have no issues with, with men at all. And then certainly with no issues with the, the male rangers, I think they're doing a fantastic job as well. But it was simply because of my uh, experiences with yeah. the female rangers that I wanted to help them specifically. And for me, specific is a very important word. I have an expression, specific is terrific. And I find, and my team find as well now, um, that the more specific we are in our goals, the more um, impact we can make. So we are very specific about what we're trying to achieve. I think as well, you know, um, it's not a, just talk about um, males and females that, as a divide. It's simply a lot of the time as well, it's seen as a very male role. And yeah. even in the local communities, for example, I know that traditionally it would be the men that would be going out doing the, the, uh, the ranger roles and that kind of stuff. So I think it's nice as well to highlight that actually, you know, there are females that are doing it and they are doing this role. And also using them as an inspiration for young girls who are growing up to be like, okay, well, this is an option that, that I can do this as well. Absolutely. I've had the privilege of going back to their, their communities and their villages. And, you know, you see the pride with which they wear their uniforms. And then some of the rangers have said to me, oh, when we were growing up, people in our communities um, said, oh, you know, you can never do that work. That work's not for women. You can never drive a big four by four vehicle. That's not for women. 
and uh, this one ranger's in a sign written four by four in her camo uniform and you could see the respect from uh, people in the, the the communities you know looking on to her and sp especially the the young girls and the young women that you know really inspired by them so i think it's it's just for me it wins on on every level but it was actually craig spencer the founder of the black mambas that came up with this genius idea in 2013 they were just you know he said they were just losing elephants and rhinos um in the greater kruger national park at such an alarming rate that he was just hitting his head against a brick wall and he had this idea of uh reaching out to the local communities to uh ask women to come forward for uh, selection and, and then to be trained and uh you know he just said what an underutilized workforce they were and you know these women are just i mean they're, they're, they're a lot of them have come from very difficult um you know backgrounds and and you know whether that's um you know illness or abusive relationships or maybe they're aids orphans all sorts of hardships um and you can see that they're, they're even though they're lovely and warm and you know really friendly they're just nails they're they're, t they're just like very 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 tough strong women and the more i chatted to them they said you know we just didn't have anything to lose coming forward to uh to go for this opportunity to to better our our lives and, and that of our families too and now you see them sort of some of them eight years later and they're they you know they've owned they own land they've built houses um, some of them have gone and got degrees and it's it's brilliant to see it it's uh it's definitely working so you know i'm excited by it <laughs> and when you've been spending time with these ladies um what kind of impact did that have on you did it have did you have any moments that kind of were quite profound and also um did you learn anything that surprised you when you were you were with them yeah, well as i said earlier i was surprised coming from a as an adventurer and you know being used to being in sort of roughing it like on everest i was 47 days on the mountain above 5000 meters and you know i thought yeah, i'm 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 quite uh, strong and tough and i can deal with this but i wasn't expecting that feeling of exposure that i had sort of when you're out in the bush and i'm in a little one man tent and you've just seen a herd of, of wild elephants just around the corner and my first night I was lying there just having these visions of these elephants sort of not seeing my tent and just walking straight over and as I said you know on the mountain I'm, I'm much more experienced but it, it was a, a magical experience as well being in the um the African bush with these women you know we're not talking safari trips here and they said to me at the beginning the one of the Akashinga rangers you know you're not on a safari trip now um so basically when we tell you to do something do it don't question it and you know you're out on patrol for six seven hours at a time it's roasting hot um you know and it's all hand signals and you're doing it all in in silence and you just i just felt incredibly privileged um and a little bit scared at times but incredibly privileged to be having this experience you know you're literally pinching yourself thinking i'm out on patrol and with these women and i had the same with the the black mambas as well um you know and it's scary stuff especially when the the animals start getting quite close and then you start seeing signs of poachers and you know yeah it's it's a whole different world out there so that makes me respect these women even more knowing that you know it's it's, it's it's the unknown even though they're highly skilled and highly trained uh there's lots of variables out there that can hurt them for sure for sure i mean they're doing an incredible job and we're so grateful for the work that they're doing and um, we touched on it a bit earlier when we were talking about you know um how your passion and your drive and not being afraid to to get knockbacks and to get no's um and to just keep going as as um kind of kept you going and driven you throughout your journey um is there anything that you've learned now that you wish you'd known at the start and others back home maybe could benefit from yeah i think just going for it like not listening to the naysayers and as i said being really specific so i'm kind of contradicting myself in saying don't be too specific in in one 
role of career or one skill, I think be as open as possible to uh, to how many skill sets you can learn and acquire. Um, but being specific about your goals. So for me, um, becoming a skydiving camera woman was a very specific goal. Getting sponsors on board to fund my uh, becoming the first woman to skydive Everest was very specific. Learning to climb mountains, to climb Everest, again, specific. Um, setting up the charity, How Many Elephants, is very specific about African elephants um, and anti-poaching. Um, and then World Female Ranger Day is obviously about the female rangers. So for me, um, that's really helped me channel my uh, energies, really pinpoint that. And then once you get to that tiny little pinpoint and you're like, this is where I want to be, then that can open up into a much bigger expanse, but with that focused goal. Because otherwise, I mean, I studied, as I said, master, a master's in sustainable design and sustainable sustainability is such a broad term. And a lot of people that I saw on my course really struggled to uh, find a direction because it was just could have gone and done plastics, climate change, could have done so many different things. Uh, and, and, you know, it was just a bit overwhelming. So I felt almost a bit smug when I uh, got on my my elephant mission because I was just like, right, I'm razor sharp focus and, and I'm just going to run with that. Um, and I that's what's happened for the last eight years. I, I didn't stop, just went for it. Um, also on that note, I, I, I don't say this arrogantly, but I um, don't consider myself uh, an academic particularly. Um, but I got the highest mark on that master's that they've ever given on that course. I got 90%, which is huge for a non-science or, or math, maths master's. Um, and it's not like I said, I don't consider myself, I was no more academic than anyone else on that course. But I was just so passionate about what I was doing that I, I just put in everything. So I, and I, I produced a, an awful lot of good work um but it didn't feel like work it, it just you know it just came quite easily um so you know i do like to tell people that because like i say if you if you're open to things and you find something you're passionate about it it's incredible what what you can achieve yeah. so don't listen to the naysayers there's always going to be naysayers there's always going to be the keyboard warriors with social media um one thing i will say is by uh with the my charity by being non-political and just um, displaying the, the data and the facts, um, that's actually made life a lot easier because, you know, I'm not, um, you know, we don't get hardly any negativity. We don't get too much uh, harassment, as it were, which I know, you know, when you're dealing with these contentious subjects, some people feel uh, very downtrodden and overwhelmed by the amount of negativity that is out there on social media. So, um, don't read the comments. Just stay focused on that mission and 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 let them do whatever they're doing because it really can. It can bring you down, and I've experienced it in other areas, and it's it's horrible. So um, you know, just trying to be positive and keep moving towards your own goal is is all you can do. Yeah, I mean, I, as we, we were mentioning earlier, we were discussing this quite a lot earlier, and it is for anyone watching back home. Don't feel like you have to be an academic or anything like that. Everyone can come with their own skill set. It's finding that passion, and that's what um, uh, the comments coming through as we're talking, Holly. Um, a lot of people are saying the same thing. It's having that passion at the start can give yep. you the drive to then um, kind of find what your niche is, and and then kind of use that to help make um, make a difference. Yeah, and we well, you've got basically you've got your charity with the the how many elephants you've got your world female range day. Um, how can people support you guys? What's the best way? Is there different ways for each individual um, kind of element? What's what's the best way for people to kind of yeah. support the work you're doing? Yeah, and this is a, a really great point because both of them are awareness raising campaigns. So the more that people can spread the, the message and the word and the work that we're doing, the better. So the website for How Many Elephants, howmanyelephants.org and worldfemalerangerday.org. And there's lots of information, um, you know, from one end of the spectrum of sharing social media posts that all helps right down to the other end of the, the scale of um, 
on our World Female Ranger Day, we have a challenge. So step into the boots of a ranger for seven days. And th these uh, some of these rangers are walking sort of 20 Ks a day. So that's quite a lot. When you start trying to walk 20 Ks a day for seven days straight, it gives you some appreciation of, of the, um, the distances that they're doing. Um, so we're encouraging people to set up their own fundraising pages on our World Female Ranger Day platform. And the female ranger teams that we're working with have also set up pages. So the money that they're raising goes directly to them. Um, and then we have a central donation pot where any money that's um, coming into the central pot will then be distributed via grants through through the charity, How Many Elephants? And again, on How Many Elephants, you can um, colour an elephant, mindful colouring for adults and children. Um, and then you can upload pictures of your, your elephants onto our social media. You can apply to become a volunteer for the charity. Um, lots and lots of different ways you can get involved. But what I will say is we're a small charity. And if you do email us, um, we will get back to you. So we're really, um, you know, really, uh, we don't like it when we email people and you don't hear anything back. So there is humans behind uh, how many elephants and world female ranger day so um you know if you come up with an idea that we haven't thought of of ways that you could promote uh what we're doing and help the female rangers or help the african elephants we're all ears we'd love to hear from you i mean you're doing a fantastic job thank you so much holly thank, thank you, you for one more question left and then we'll start to wrap up if you're watching back home and you'd like to put a question to Holly, then just pop it in the comments section below um, on Facebook and I will be able to do that for you. Um, if you're watching this and it's not live, then please do still put your question. As Holly said, there is a face underneath the, underneath the machine and uh, we will get back to you with a response with that as well. Um, I know that conservation can be quite a daunting area. It can be a little bit overwhelming um, and can get a bit, little bit too much. Um, so I like to try and finish things on a bit of a positive note. So I'd love to know, you know, how, how you remain positive and what your favourite success story is. Yeah, so well, I've kind of got two favourite success stories, but one of them is, um, sorry to keep talking about the Black Mambas, they, they, they have a, appeared more than the Akashinga Rangers and other Ranger teams in this interview, but we are working with a, a broad range of um a range of teams but i do love the story of the black mambas uh during lockdown didn't see an increase in poaching and i think that is testament to the work they're doing because they've built such strong relationships with the uh, local communities um you know and they were going in taking food parcels and um i just think for them a, a hats off to them that they they did not see an increase in in poaching um, and since they've started, uh, since 2013, um, they've seen a, a decrease in, uh, you know, poaching greatly. So they're just, they're just, for me, they are an absolute success story. So well done to Craig and all the Black Mambas out there. Um, we are right behind them for sure. And then for us personally, um, uh, getting World Female Ranger Day off the ground. So we came up with the idea a year ago, but couldn't get the funding for it. Um, COVID-19 has definitely played havoc with uh, trying to access pots of money um, and, it, and the funding came in very late for us so we pulled that whole platform together in less than eight weeks and um, it was literally working around the clock um, and as I said we are a very small team so massive thank you to uh, Margot Dempsey she's head of communications for How Many Elephants and all my trustees that have brought skills to the table and everyone that's volunteered um, for us as well it, it's just been a really uh, concerted effort and um, I thank all of them so I think I think we did really well bringing that together. No, I think I did really well bringing that together. Yeah. <laughs> and I think as well, obviously, your design background came through because I remember, um, obviously, with the work that I'm doing, that I'm constantly looking at different uh, organisations. And yeah. the, the, the posts and the, the material that you were using were very visual and very kind of striking and, and immediately kind of got my attention on the work that you're doing. So I think, it, again, it goes back to the fact that having... And a, a skill in design and things like that is a great way of, of raising 
awareness and grabbing people's attention and saying, hey, look, we're doing this kind of thing. And I don't um, think I'd have been able to afford to work with a designer. So having those skills in house is made that entirely possible. But if I was having to pay a reach out to a design agency, I'm not sure um, that we'd have got this off the ground. Um, I forgot to say as well, Margot co-founded Well Fe Female Ranger Day with me as well. So um, we did that as a, a joint thing. We're getting a bit of love for Margot as we're talking, actually. Oh, yeah. Is, um, <laughs> We've got a question coming through from uh, Jenny Desmond. Hi, Jenny. Uh, she is a great ambassador for conservation and in particular chimpanzees. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and she is asking, is there a list of locations for the How Many Elephants exhibit? Yeah, absolutely. So at the minute, the exhibition isn't up because it's a traveling exhibition. So it goes up um, for, you know, sort of set fixed periods of time. Um, but yeah, we can certainly let you know where, when, where and when future exhibitions are coming up. Um, and we have a trip planned out uh, to China, to Beijing, Shanghai and Hong Kong, which was totally ready to go for uh, October 2020, but obviously had to be postponed. Um, but yeah, we're, we're um, sort of in conversations and have, have lots of uh, fixtures in the calendar. So can definitely provide that information to you for sure. Excellent. And we've got another question coming through um, from Wega Boris, and they're asking, uh, they're saying one, it's a very impressive project, and asking how many young girls or children have been introduced to this since they will be the next generation in this? Thousands. So going from school children that we've dealt with um, in the UK, and I've been into schools in Africa and um, various other countries, right through to the female rangers inspiring women in their communities. So it's, it's, it's a pretty uh, broad spectrum of, of young girls and children being introduced to this. And I love that. It's, it's just so broad. Um, and then I know you're, sorry, um, I know your focus this year was on Africa. Um, so you, is, for the next year, are you planning to keep it uh, on specific countries? What's, what's the plan there? So with it being World Female Range Day, this is definitely a, a question we've had to consider and been asked because, you know, for me, the, the passion started with African female rangers. And I think they'll always uh, be, you know, very special to me. But since I've started chatting with uh, other rangers around the world, this, this has got to open up. This has got to be about bringing them all together. Um, so, yeah, I, I see this um, next year, um, you know, being a much more global thing and connecting these women from different countries um, rather than just in Africa. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be good. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're doing an incredible job. And I absolutely love the, the clear passion that you have for doing this. It, it really shines through. Um, I'm going to wrap up now, but is there anything that you'd like to say before we say goodbye? Just a huge thank you to everyone that has supported um, How Many Elephants and World Female Ranger Day and me so far. Um, and yeah, if you're, uh, like I said, if you want to get in touch, we answer our emails, real people. And, um, you know, if you're looking for a speaker, that's uh, how I make my money. I, I haven't never taken a penny out of my charity. It's, it's totally done through passion. Um, but, you know, obviously, uh, yeah, I, I love being out there and speaking too and, and getting the word out. So, um, yeah, get in touch. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for supporting Back Home. We've had some lovely comments as we've been chatting, um, a lot of support for the work that you're doing. Um, and we honestly, we appreciate each and every person who's watching this, sharing, commenting or liking. The more people that we can get to see this, the more engagement we can create and the more awareness we can uh, raise for the people that are doing this work for these incredible projects around the world. Um, if you've enjoyed this show, please do like, follow and share What Does the Giraffe Say Media. Uh, we have many more exciting interviewees lined up over the next few weeks and we'd love for you to come and watch. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Holly, for coming in and right. thank you for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.